both since the beginning, 2007, in the European Nuclear Energy Forum. But we, we saw this is very much led by the nuclear industry. Now we are, GMF is represented in the steering committee of INEF, uh, and this is fine. But with INEF, we also try to um, launch a debate, as I was saying, on um, energy mix, not on nuclear culture. So let's talk about energy mix because, as we said, you know, in this debate, then you can have many stakeholders. So one pilot initiative at European level with the support of the EC and the support of the European Social and Economic Committee was some years ago to launch a Spanish energy uh, mix forum, we called it, talking about all different energies, but starting about um, not about talking about the energy mix and the, and the and quantities or how the energy mix should look, look like, but rather how should we promote a dialogue, which are the minimum requirements that everyone agrees upon, that we can start a dialogue on, um, on energy in our country at, at the national level, starting with, okay, what are the, everyone agrees that there needs to be independence, that there needs to be um, an energy supply, su sustainable energy and sustained energy supply, that there needs to be um, low local environmental impact. So, a series of requirements that everyone can agree upon, and then we can start the dialogue about energy mix rather than nuclear only. Thank you very much. So now it's time for questions. I would like to now give the floor to uh, the audience. Uh, if you have questions, please raise your hand. If you don't, I have some, but uh, we prefer that it would come from you. Yeah, no, I don't. I will not ask myself a question. No, I, I just want one minute to elaborate a little bit on what Isabel said. She talked about the regulated asset base. So we talked about the financing. Financing is difficult for nuclear. We talked about taxonomy and so on. Uh, in UK, they have the same problem that than everywhere. They want nuclear, but they want to do it, uh, what they call value for money. So they want nuclear, but they want that it represent a good investment for the consumer, for the people, and so on. So, uh, yeah, nuclear is kind of expensive. So what uh, what do they, they try at the moment? They try this regulated asset-based model. So I will not elaborate too long, but it's a very well-known model for infrastructure, many, many uh, bridges, dams, highway, uh, power lines and so on have been built include with this model in, in Europe and probably elsewhere. It's the first time that it's applied or it, uh, we are, they are trying to apply it to nuclear. But basically it can offer uh, to a private investor, for example pension fund, it can uh, offer a, a decent return on interest. It can offer moderate risk of investment. And uh, we hope that uh, Sizewell C will be the first project in the world to be financed by this uh, RAB model. So if you are interested, I encourage you to, to go on the internet and RAB. The British government launch a consultation. You will find uh, a lot of papers online. But it's, it's a, it might be, let's hope, it will be an innovative way to, to finance uh, nuclear. Thank you. Uh, Rob model, so in Beata, is something that Poland could engage? You think so? Mm, as regards the support for new investment, um, well, this is the great question we are facing, and we still uh, unfortunately don't have the answer. So I'm, I'm rather here to listen to uh, outside advice. Well, of course, we've got a few in mind. We, we're very interested in the Finnish model, uh, Mankala model. This is something that we're looking for closely, but probably if we go this way, it would require um, a lot of changes due to our um, uh, country specialities and the, the situation in our um, energy sector companies. Um, so this is uh, about from um, Yes, the, my, my answer that we are still ahead of this big decision, unfortunately. It's, we are not the people to, to advise, I think. We have a question uh, uh, in the back. If someone can bring the, the mic, there is one here. Oh, Malachan, could you say something about the local confidence building of 
from a municipal point of view and how this has created a great success for uh, waste management depositories in Sweden and maybe Finland too. Roland, you're Swedish, <laughs> you can talk about it. Confidence building, <laughs> confidence building among the people living in the cities. We have been working in JMF with that issue in many years. So yeah. if you could say something about it. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm not sure what to say. It's a key, key uh, requirement, the local confidence to have, to have and maintain the trust and the confidence in the national authorities in the decision-making process. It's a long-term things that have been said. It requires transparency. Um, it takes a long time, as you've seen from the examples in Finland, in Sweden, 25 years, in France as well. And um, it can be broken in a minute, of course, and it's uh, very difficult to regain it. So that's why um, we think it's, uh, it's crucial to maintain this dialogue, ongoing dialogue with the local communities and not just like a one-off experience when you need it. And this is something really for national government representatives and also for the nuclear industry and, and for, for the European Commission representatives to maintain this dialogue with the local level and to listen to what the, their expectations and their needs of information are and uh, their concerns to keep um, meeting these this demands. Also, if we want nuclear to continue and, and to live in harmony, we would say. Is it okay? Sorry. So the local confidence, confidence building is necessary to, to have a cooperation between the municipality, the industry and the government. If something is lacking, it will fail. And if it's fail, it will be impossible to build uh, plants and uh, depositories and things like that because as we live in, in democracies, it could be very hard to build if the people are against it in, in a very big scale. But the local confidence building, it can succeed, and I think this has been proven in Sweden and Finland. Thank you. Can I just add a quick anecdote? Uh, I agree with everything you say here. Also, I think there might be somewhat change of times, at least in Finland. Uh, I, I, together with a, a colleague at the city council, we made a proposal that Helsinki should look into uh, uh, SMRs or uh, nuclear district heating as an option. Um, and that got, got through, well, that the motion got through and it was, uh, it, it ended up being on the agenda of the municipal kind of company that now they actually do look at these issues and so on. Uh, it's not just because of me, it's of course the technological development, all this and so on. But all this, uh, during the, the two years, I've never received one message from anyone saying that they don't want nuclear power here. But I've received a lot who say that this is a good idea. And actually, uh, the power company was planning on a biomass station North Helsinki. That was fiercely opposed. And some of those people contacted me that, hey, this customer sounds, sounds good because we don't have pellet trucks running and so on. So um, I would just, but, but probably there is opposition. I mean, of course there is and so on. But, uh, but I would just say that uh, I, I think my perception, this might be a naive Finnish perception, is that in, within the nuclear industry, we have a, we fear of the fear is also slowing things down. So if you have a good case, sell it, and people they're they're up, up to it. Oui, just a témoignage sur sur le sujet. Tout à l'heure, Alexandre Gria a dit que les gens qui travaillent dans le nucléaire sont des bons ambassadeurs. Et les gens qui travaillent dans le nucléaire, ils, ils habitent dans les territoires aussi. Ils habitent les territoires. Donc ils sont des bons ambassadeurs dans le territoire. Et généralement, ils sont impliqués. Donc ils, font, ils sont dans les municipalités, ce qui est une très bonne chose parce que ça leur permet d'être à l'écoute permanente. Par contre, moi, moi mon expérience, c'est de dire, quand je réunissais les communes autour de ma centrale, en général, on me disait, on va t'envoyer le gars de la centrale, comme ça, mais je leur disais non. Parce que sinon, on est toujours entre nous, et c'est trop facile. Il faut venir, il faut aussi euh, impliquer dans le dialogue. 
pas que les gens qui sont euh, initiés parce qu'ils sont à la centrale ou ils étaient à la centrale, etc. Il y a cette facilité dans laquelle il ne faut pas tomber. C'est une chance que les gens soient nos ambassadeurs parce qu'ils expliquent simplement à leurs voisins, aux gens qui habitent à côté, ce qu'ils font. Ils répondent simplement aux questions. Mais il faut aussi effectivement entretenir ce dialogue parce que ça a été très bien dit ce matin par le maire de, euh, de Okiyoto, je ne connais pas la... qui a dit « TVO a toujours fait ce qu'il avait promis ». Ça, c'est extrêmement important. Et il y a un autre message qui est très important, c'est qu'il faut que les populations soient convaincues que ce qui se passe dans les centrales, leur est raconté. Rien n'est caché. Hein? Donc, c'est un sentiment qu'il faut donner. Une, et ça se travaille dans, dans le temps, être convaincu que les gens qui me parlent me disent la vérité et ne me cachent pas des choses. Parce que plein de gens autour de nous expliquent ah « Non, mais on ne vous dit pas tout. » Voilà. Ça, c'est super important. La, la confiance, il faut s'appuyer sur les gens qui travaillent dans les centrales, mais pas que. <rire> um, just uh, one uh, simple anecdote. We were discussing with uh, one of the our power plant uh, director, and he was mentioning, we inform that we will produce from this time to, to this, on this time period, and so on. And indeed, uh, when they decide to stop for some reason, or really reduce, you know, the uh, water uh, vapor doesn't emit, is not existing anymore, and he has to inform population, because people say, oh, It's not working as it should be working. So, is there anything going wrong? So, so, so there is really a, a very good understanding among people uh, living around the power plant, especially when you have this type of uh, air refrigerant. Um, but also, uh, uh, going back to local acceptance, uh, in France we have 19 sites. Uh, outside of Paris and big cities. And what we have seen that is uh, by the time that industries is uh, leaving the countryside or some parts of France, and we talk about uh, distress of rurality, uh, power plants value, and we were talking about the value, Um, is really perceived very positively because people realize that thanks to the power plant, also, of course, there is employment, but they have policemen, firemen, uh, association, and a lot of things that are part of everyday life that, are, that have disappeared from other areas of France that do not have power plants. And when we talk about Fessenheim enclosure, Uh, that was also one point, and they are in some way uh, lucky that Fessenheim is not in such a distressed rurality area of France, but that could be, uh, and, and this is also why for PPE, it was decided that we would close some power plants, but no sites. Guess why? <laughs> One question for, 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 for Susanna uh, on the Commission side. What sort of so I know you have an NF, but maybe uh, what you, what, you are, what is your thinking in terms of uh, developing dialogue at local, but also at EU level on uh, on nuclear? Oh, good question. Um, well, we we consult uh, a lot on different things. Um, If I can hijack a bit this question, because I'm, I'm very curious to know if um, this is a known fact that we have right now a discussion about four different types of financing instruments that all have to do with uh, energy. Um, two of them are directly related to the EU budget. One is another form of public financing, and the last one is, is uh, private financing. I wonder if you all know what I'm talking about. Probably not. Okay, so we have the EIB lending, energy lending policies, which have been under revision recently. There was a public consultation. Um, there is an EIB board meeting tomorrow at which we expect nuclear to be, as it was always uh, possible to be financed. So good news for Poland. Um, the 
two um, topics which are directly related to the um, EU budget is the so-called climate tracking and the climate proofing. Yeah. What is this? This is um, the idea that of the multi-annual financial framework, a certain percentage should be dedicated to climate actions. It's already been announced that this would be 25%, meaning that all of the things that the EU does directly from its own budget 25% of that money should go to um, climate actions. That was the uh, tracking part. The proofing is specific programs like InvestEU, which should go to things like Connecting Europe Facility, Regional Development Funding, etc. Uh, and then my favorite topic, taxonomy. Um, so this is actually the only private financing tool. Um, the proposal for this was made already in May 2018, when all of the proposals for the next MFF were submitted by the European Commission. Um, the, as somebody mentioned, I think, on the panel, there were two main issues um, or two main criteria on how to declare an economic activity sustainable. This was um, climate mitigation uh, target, so this is a very technical criterion, uh, grams of CO2 emitted. Um, Simple. The other one is the more complicated one, which is the do no significant harm criterion. Both of these have a list of six criteria, which is in the Commission proposal. Now, what makes this a bit complicated is that the, the proposal of the Commission, it's a regulation, it's with the uh, Council and Parliament. So the text itself is still a moving target. Um, the Commission proposal was set up in such a way that something is either in or out. So sustainable or not, which would have um, consequences on whether the private uh, uh, financing industry, so banks with loans, with uh, securities, with collective investment instruments, whatever kind of instruments, uh, which are labeled as green bonds or green financing, would be able to benefit from a more, more favorable financing conditions. Or not, if they do not uh, uh, comply with these, uh, these conditions. Now, um, the Commission is, is uh, obviously not an expert on everything, so what we've done is we invited a, a group of uh, what's called the Technical Expert Group to uh, help with uh, setting up, um, basically helping us to, to analyze all of the economic activities and to see uh, what complies and what doesn't. Now, the, this poor expert group, to take them a bit into... Uh, uh, to be a bit realistic, they had to analyze a lot of activities, um, which they obviously are not experts on everything. So in terms of nuclear energy, there was no nuclear expert on this expert group. The list is on the web, you can see their names. Um, obviously there was none. There were experts on energy, but not uh, anywhere near nuclear. So on the clear um, condition, which was the uh, grams of CO2, they concluded nuclear is absolutely in, uh, complies, no problem. The do no sig significant harm criterion was a bit more complicated for them because they cited documents that they found relevant for themselves, but obviously they're not experts in nuclear energy, much less in radioactive waste management. So they, their conclusion was, we don't know. So, which basically means um, the commission obviously has other experts group which, which uh, can answer this question. So we, not all is lost, don't worry. Um, so, yeah, so there's still a lot uh, to happen and I think that we have some cause for, for um, joy in the future. Now, for one point, if, uh, you remind me of the, what the question was, but we have um, the new um, Commission President-elect, uh, Ursula von der Leyen. She has in her political guidelines a specific proposal for a just transition fund, which is aimed specifically at countries which, for whom the transition to clean energy will cause more difficulties than for others, like Poland. Um, what was the question, sorry? Um, that, I mean, for right now, we are planning the next uh, NF, which should take place in, in actually my hometown, Bratislava. So if there are any issues that you would like to address more than others, we're happy to um, get views. We'll once again uh, launch a um, 
steering committee, which is a group of people that represent all stakeholders uh, of nuclear energy, will be happy to have GMF there as well. Um, concerning the idea to discuss um, the types of low carbon energies, I'm sorry to say we already did it um, last year. So we can repeat the uh, topics as well, but we like to give the industry and all the stakeholders a bit of time to actually implement what we had concluded on the last time before we repeat the topic, but if it's if there's a important angle that we should take, we can always uh, rediscuss this, but um, yeah, so please let us know if there are some good topics we should discuss. Okay, um, I will not give any topics for NF <laughs> straight from my head. Um, I just quick react to uh, what I meant, what I had in mind when I spoke about the EIB situation and the ongoing discussions that are happening today and tomorrow uh, taking place. It's not only about um, the attempt that, that's been made to um, uh, exclude a nuclear from the um, lending policy, AB lending policy, but it's uh, also about the reality, you know, what, where the, the money goes from EIB and when we look at the nuclear projects that were financed, I'm not talking about the 80s, but I'm not talking about the recent years, then you see that the money isn't going to nuclear new build. It's, and it, I think this is what, 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 what could be needed. So uh, it's not only about what's on paper, but uh, it's also about reality and we get signals um, informal that EIB is not, will not uh, give, give, give green light to any type of new nuclear new build. So this is the problem. Um, and I wanted to quickly add to the, um, the topic that was ongoing about the, how to persuade the local population, how to persuade people. Uh, we in Poland, we do not deal with a, a existing power plant. We are more in the face of how to persuade the citizens. And this is going quite well. But I would like to um, add uh, another dimension of people who you might uh, deal with to be to persuade them. It's the situation we have like within the what's now the Ministry of Energy. Previously, it was the Ministry of Economy, and um, the ministers and uh, staff responsible for developing the mining sector. They were strongly opposing um, the talk on nuclear uh, power. Um, um, and it was actually difficult even internally uh, to, to get these circles, not to mention you know, the companies, the mining companies in Silesia. So internally it was very difficult to show them um, the benefits that they will have. And uh, I think that was the most difficult thing that we had internally when it comes to the nuclear power program. And the reality is now that they are supporters of the program. And even I, in different meetings, I was surprised to hear them defending the nuclear case. Uh, so this is just uh, another dimension of uh, the, the, the debate, the persuading uh, aspect. Thank you. I have a word, um, persuading, oh, don't say this in public with the, um, yeah, it's an advice, not persuading, not acceptance. It sounds, um, I really, well, I personally hate this word uh, as a social scientist that I am also. Let's talk, it, it's really traditional approach of deciding, announcing and defending a strategy. Let's move towards interacting with the people, meeting and take decisions together and about co-owning a sustainable relationship, a sustainable project between, between us rather than persuading people to accept something which is not uh, really nice and sounds extremely negative. So let's try to, to switch this idea and um, also uh, about uh, new topics for INEF. Um, we've been asking whether the civil society could have a panel, but really just the civil society opinions, and I'm not referring to GMF, I'm also referring to groups which may have a say and we never ask them. We often talk, think about forestry people or farmers. What do they think about nuclear? Do they have an opinion? Or I'm an environmental scientist. I'm surrounded by people being anti-nuclear and I work with nuclear. So. Um, yeah, what's their opinion of environmental scientists on, this, on these issues? So I think a panel of, of the opinion of civil society would be a new thing as well and would have the voice of, the voice of different people. <coughs> One question or comment, if I may. Um, 
related to this dialogue and coming back to the point that the member of parliament Harjanne was making earlier, the biggest obstacle to making real progress is in our own minds and uh, opening, uh, getting into dialogue with various stakeholders is easier if you can introduce a new topic every now and then in, instead of just repeating stuff that has been discussed in, for decades. And, and luckily in our decision-making system, this is precisely what has happened in the nuclear power project. That we started in the early 90s from the discussion of whether we should have more nuclear or not. And, and uh, this continued until early 2000, but then by 2010 the discussion was no longer about whether we should have more nuclear, but how much and by whom. So it was a different question. And, and, and I invite and challenge everybody to, to work into this direction. So introduce new topics also. And talk about nuclear for other applications that, that, that we are already familiar with. Because that's also possible and it, it, it will bring into this circle a lot of new people who have not been exposed to nuclear, who don't have a strong opinion, either in favor or against, who most of which we can convince that it's a good idea. Not everybody, but we don't have to convince everybody. 80% is enough. Thank, thank you. There, is, there was one good question here, if yeah, you can yeah. be quick, and after we, uh, we conclude. Oui, bon, vous m'entendez Oui, bonjour, Patrick Fauchon, je suis le maire de Flamanville en France, et euh, je voulais juste faire un petit commentaire, euh, parce que l'élément de confiance de la population, la notion de transparence, est un exercice difficile, c'est un long chemin euh, que je suis depuis de nombreuses années, et pour donner un éclairage sur la France, c'est juste pour dire que ce n'est pas si simple que ça. Euh, nous avons euh, des décisions en France, ce sont des décisions au niveau national, qui sont euh, parfois absolument incompréhensibles à l'échelon local. Et même si nous avons euh, l'existence de sites nucléaires depuis de nombreuses années et que nous accompagnons et que nous sommes des partenaires pour cette... Euh, ce développement et cette production d'énergie, il y a des moments où on est bien mal en point pour pouvoir continuer à je dirais, renforcer la confiance dans l'ensemble de la population. Je vais, je vais juste prendre trois exemples, trois exemples simples. La décision, par exemple, de fermeture de Fessenheim est une décision où qui est une décision, je ne peux dire que politique, pour laquelle aucune démonstration n'a été apportée aux populations concernées à proximité, sur le plan économique, sur le plan de la sûreté, sur les plans sur lesquels on est en permanence en dialogue sur le nucléaire. J'en prendrai un deuxième exemple. Il y a quelques années, en 2010, euh, on a sorti une circulaire sur la maîtrise de l'urbanisation autour des à proximité des centrales nucléaires, en nous expliquant qu'il euh, ne faudrait surtout pas qu'on continue à construire et qu'on habite à proximité immédiate des centrales nucléaires, dans une démarche de doctrine de sûreté parfaitement compréhensible, de faire en sorte de pouvoir gérer plus facilement des procédures d'évacuation de, cas en cas où, sachant qu'en parallèle, on construisait un réacteur qui était dix fois plus sûr que les précédents, qu'on avait toujours en place et qui fonctionnait. Pour les personnes qui habitent à côté, ça reste relativement difficile à comprendre que euh, là où euh, l'enjeu nucléaire avait été parfaitement compris dans sa dimension euh, d'aménagement du territoire, de production d'énergie, on nous expliquait qu'il faudrait les mettre dans des endroits où il n'y ait pas de population et qu'on aurait plus de difficultés à gérer aujourd'hui des situations de crise que ce qu'on nous avait présenté il y a déjà de nombreuses années. Je prendrai un troisième exemple sur la difficulté de l'information et de la transparence. Sur un projet comme le projet EPR, 
euh, bah, l'annonce des retards, c'est toujours faite euh, le mois précédent.